Welcome everyone to uh, the Potter World Q&A. So I am Maria, Head of Media and Head of Architects. We have Drobaldor. Hello. Headmaster and we have Danny, our Tech and Dev Head. Hello. Clary, Head of Academics. Hello. We have Gracelyn, uh, Assistant to Head of Moderation. Hello. We have Flipendo, who is a GD Lead. Oh, why? <laughs> we have Kate, who is class design lead. Hi. And then we have Justin and Sister, who will be helping moderating. Hello. Hello. So during this Q and A, you guys will be able to ask questions uh, based on what's being said. I'll put the link in here. First off, uh, due to some real life stuff. Uh, real life magic. Uh, Dumbledore was not, will not be here for very long, so if there's any questions uh, specifically for him on topic uh, for the game, of course, uh, feel free to ask those now. Awesome. So thanks for coming, making the time. Um, I know this is early for some of you guys. Um, we like to hold the Q and A's every now and then, just to kind of fill you guys in and keep transparent with what our plans are on Potter World. Um, I know we don't hold these that often, um, but it's kind of hard to get everybody together um, because of all the different time zones. But we appreciate that you guys come and um, ask us your questions that you want to find out about, and we want to share with you, you know, what we've been working on. Maria, do you have uh, the the link of all the um, the itinerary of how we're going to answer everything so people can see the order that we're going to go in? Uh, that, yep. Yeah. I will grab that real quick. That way. So um, People will know that if they have a question regarding a certain aspect, they can wait till the section that it's going to be uh, in. Yeah, so basically, first up, there's like any questions to you, um, and then there'll be uh, class design and academics um, with Clary and uh, Kate. And then we'll have a game design with uh, Flip. Let me grab that real quick. And then at the end, there'll be like an open floor in case there's some questions relating to the game that you feel was not answered, but that you'd like to get an answer for. Um, that being said, because I'm going to be here for the first 30 minutes of this, um, a lot of the explanations of all the GD and all that stuff will be happening, like Maria said, um, by all the leads of those departments. Uh, I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to just hear me talking, uh, with, the, which is usually something that happens on, in a lot of the QAs. It's just me talking, and the, I'm pretty sure that gets pretty boring. So um, I'm excited to have the team help out this time and talk about their sections. Um, but if you guys have any questions for me specifically before I have to go, um, Maria and all of them are going to be filtering out the questions now. So uh, if possible, also. Uh, keeping it on topic of you know game design and you know the future of Pot World, I would love to answer questions about like what my favorite color and all that stuff is. But I believe that I've answered those in past Q and A's as well. Um, there were some that were um, submitted before that I kind of wanted to just touch on. Let's see here. Okay, so there's this one that says, "How much of the new map is finished?" Uh, in terms of the release that we're going to have next, about 80, 80 to eighty-five percent of it is done. We're actually we actually have the copy of all of the worlds that we currently have on Potter World. So like the Hogsworth build and all those, those are all moved over onto the world. Um, right now we're doing the fun stuff of setting up the uh, mob spawning locations, little camps for dark followers, um, all that good stuff, and also creating some extra things like um, vampire manners and stuff like that. Not to spoil anything, but um, all of those mob spawning locations are being created now, and that's pretty much the last thing. So um, we're almost there. There's this question. Since the Fantastic Beast movies have been released, I was wondering if we would possibly see New York and Paris added on the server. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, especially the Paris Ministry of Magic was a really cool thing. Um, I th think a lot of us are really excited to build that one. Uh, same with the Makuza and all that stuff. However, the New York that you see in that movie is dated older than the New York that would be in our world. So I do have a plan with that. Um, that being maybe a scenario or something where you go back to New York, old New York, via like a uh, memory walker or something like that, and you get to experience some sort of dungeon in that sense. Um, 
in that old time because again the new york in that world is not the same time timeline as ours hopefully that answers that question i think uh those are all the things that aren't going to be answered by me but will be answered by other people so i don't want to like double up on answers or anything like that people filtering the questions is there any other questions that were added that um are meant for me only the one about your onesie uh My onesie <laughs> Yeah, who made your onesie for the spring event? Uh, I believe it was Flip. Yeah, it was me. Thank you, Flip. I just Flip I just, is like, my personal uh, fashion designer. So, hats off to Flip. All right. If there's any that filter in for me, uh, in the meantime, after each people section, uh, go ahead and you know you guys can ask me it. Yep. All right. Let's continue then. So now it will be. Passed on to Clary and Kate with uh, academics and class design. Okay, so um, Clary's going to start us off with some general academics questions. Um, cool. So the main thing that people really wanted to know with academics was about European classes um, and uh, classes in that time zone and stuff. And I wanted to kind of explain to people that I know that that is an issue and I know that it is a situation that needs resolving and it is something that I'm looking into resolving but it is not necessarily as easy as just hire European professors um, mostly because we don't get that many applications from European time zones um, so if all the applications we get are from America for class design then that's kind of the only Insert people that we're going to have reporting. and in terms of having professors just teach in that time zone uh, again, we can't require when they teach, although I have been Inside doing a couple of different things reporting. to try and make uh, there be more classes in that time zone, which I think has already been working a little bit. Um, so I just kind of wanted to explain about that a little bit, that like, I know that there is the situation, but it's not necessarily something that's all that easy to resolve. Um, so yeah, that was kind of the only question that we got in advance about academics. I don't know if, Kate, you want to do the like class design ones that we got in advance? Sure. So um, most of the class design questions that we got were about WIS PE, which is definitely something I'm going to go over. But first, I'm just going to address like most of the other class design questions. So one question we got was, what is class design and why don't I ever hear anything about it? Is it part of game design and what do they do? Is the lead Clary Pants or Drupal Door? So class design is a staff only team and it's comprised of people only on the academic team. Um, and it's, it's, it's not part of game design, but we're kind of aligning with game design more since the GD rework and the lead is Claire and not Jay and I'm the supervisor. So yeah, we mostly do um, interactive stuff in classes and like class spell books or we sometimes build classrooms and then we also do whiz PE. so yeah um another question we had was um will p will the pe class ever become a full-time class at the state um at the state how it is now um currently the pe that's being taught during events will not be a full-time class but we are working on a new PE, which incorporates a lot more magic. Um, a question that we always get is, why are you changing PE? And that's just basically because right now, Wiz PE is not Wizards PE. It's just parkour and has nothing to do with magic. And we really want to like um, change it so it has something to do with magic, because that's, that's what Potter World is. So um, we're definitely doing stuff with, with magic. And yes, we're hoping that the new PE will not only be taught during events and it'll become a regular class. So yes. Um, the next question is, can you please have someone talk about Wizards PE and what class design is doing with it? I'm really excited for it, but I wanted to hear from people who are working on it. Can I hear more about the new Wizards PE system? So that's um, basically it's just, it's parkour like before and mazes but we've incorporated magic to it. Right now we're in the kind of the last testing stages. Um, we're just trying to get it refined and I promise it's gonna be really fun once it gets released. Uh, I know there are a lot of issues with it when it first came out, um, but we've, we've definitely refined it a lot and I've been working on it for the last 
six months or so. So, yeah. Um, so if there aren't any more classifying questions that were previously set, sent in. Um, oh, okay, so there, there's ones that are sent in now. So one of them is, are we going to have more flying classrooms coming? So we don't have too many plans for more flying classrooms. There are a few that are being worked on right now. But um, we, I mean, if you want to suggest more flying classrooms, I'm sure the user voice will be, um, will, will do the job. So yeah. Um, will there be NPC classes in the near future? I'm not entirely sure what you need, mean by NPC classes, but if you mean like um, more tech coming into classes, then yes, class design is always working on um, putting tech into classes. So it's not as much as just having a book and quote and then assignments. So I can speak yes. two seconds to that, to that question yes. as well, if I can add, I can add it. it. Um, um, so, so we are going to be working on some sort of automated, automated class. class. These, are, These not are not to replace um, manual classes at all. This is just a support. Um, for, I think it would be very helpful, the EU time zones and the AU time zones where, you know, we don't have as many professors and stuff on, um, having a support structure where perhaps um, a professor can design a class can kind of filter it into the system and the system would teach a class for them even if they're not there. Something like that, I believe Danny and I were talking about. Um, so if that helps answer that question, um, we did have plans for um, bringing something like that into the system in the future. Yeah, so cool. And then the last one we had um, for academics right now is, will there be more classes with journeys and or exploration and help learn more about this topic? Yes, um, class design is working on a bunch of more interactive classes. Um, and class design is doing something that kind of wants to stray away from just giving notes in a book and quill. But the way that class design works is that people on the academics team actually have to suggest ideas for us to implement. So um, we can't really implement things that aren't suggested. So, um, but as projects come in, we will be completing them. But yes, that's definitely something on our kind of agenda. So I think that's it. Um, if anybody has any other questions, they can either message me or Clary or send them into the QA form. So, yeah. Um, next up, we have a flip with uh, some GD updates on what's next. Yep, so for the questions that were asked on the form before, when is Magizology or the Creature Profession releasing? That will be after the Profession's rework, which I'll be talking about soon. Um, so we will only start working on it after. Another thing is when will backpacks be added? Uh, honestly, not sure. But it, I don't know if it works well with the new system. And will we release ways that you can work in the ministry like a career? In a way, it's part of what I will be talking about. Um, and will we release more role play events? Um, we've been looking into it lately, and it's probably the earliest that it, that kind of thing happens is next year. And then an ETA on the exploration update rework that's what i'll be talking about soon and there is no eta because we don't want to put a date on it because like if we if we get it out at that time cool but if we don't then people just get disappointed and stuff so yeah uh also the part of World legend reward the reason i reduced that is because people were getting a lot of gold from it and i felt like it was too much so it won't be changed back but the task board will be getting a rework in the future uh of all tournaments i do want to do a team choice probable tournament where you can submit a form with all your team members on it um but not sure how soon i will be able to do that 
Um, also with the open world, will we release different wizarding schools? Uh, not straight away, but at some point in the future, we will release Beaubois and Dormenstrad. Okay, so moving on to events. So right now, uh, events are not a priority because we want to work on permanent gameplay. So events haven't been as much of what they used to be. But we're, we're going to be looking into having competitions like skin contests and housing contests and that kind of stuff. Um, and for a more transparent uh, event schedule, uh, here's what you can expect this year. So next month, May, is the Star Wars anniversary event. In June or July, we are planning to have a summer event. Uh, in June, we can have a small gay pride thing because june i believe is gay pride month uh august is jubilee's birthday uh, september is the butterbrew festival october is halloween november is thanksgiving and december is christmas um we might have a few things a few other things in there but it's not a priority because what we want to focus on at the moment is the rebellious update and the rebellious update is Huge update to the world. We have released a screenshot of the map in the past. Uh, mob reworks, uh, the professions rework, an update to magic, and introducing gear. So first, with the world update, we want to release over 100 quests, which will introduce you to the world and a bunch of characters around the world, and each character can have like a little story. Um, and it'll also be a way for you to earn experience and gold and maybe some other rewards as well outside of classes. So the world is split up into 16 zones, kind of like how the wilderness is. Um, and at the moment, we have plans for 14 of them. Uh, and with this update as well, the wilderness does get removed, but we definitely have enough space on the new world to accommodate all the mobs and quests and all that so in each zone there's a quest hub and there's a quest board then it gives you the coordinates for all the npcs and, and similar that have quests uh the quests are not linear as well so it's not a full storyline you get to pick and choose which quests you want to take as long as you have like required spells um and so with mobs we're reworking them to make them more exciting to fight because right now they kind of just run at you and cast spells um so we're going to be incorporating a little bit of the ai we used for the revenant dungeon so for the butcher for example if you're far away from it it like jumps towards you and if you're close it does a close range attack that kind of thing um and we're going to be moving back to a classification system rather than levels because we feel that levels limit us in terms of the difficulty of mobs so for example if we have like seven tiers of mobs tier seven could be like the lower end of tier seven could be like uh trolls right now which aren't really difficult for level 80 players but then the harder ones could be like uh vampires if vampires were swarming you that kind of difficulty uh, we're also introducing a mob exploration system. So the way that works is when you're roaming around the world and you uh, you kill mobs and there's like blocks on the ground that have particles coming out of them. When you click on those blocks and you kill mobs, you gain knowledge towards a mob. And what you gain from knowledge is uh, the coordinates of each mob spawn. Uh, also the strengths of the mob, the weaknesses, and a list of the loot that it gives. And also when you level up your knowledge as well, you will get better loot. So more loot and also the more rare loot from it. Okay, so professions. What are the current issues with professions? So there are too many items, as you may have noticed. Item is used in like one to four recipes for the most part and so you always need to get different items no matter what you're making and so everything also is super cheap because demand is super low 
um, progression within all professions is the same. You craft the item, plant, cook, brew it, takes time, and then you take it out and you get XP. Um, a user voice suggestion actually described it as a chore, and I kind of agree. Uh, and most people are doing it for cos the cosmetic rewards at level 35, where they should actually be doing it for the supply or the, the items that the professions give you, because they should be useful. So also at the end, since you have to craft to level up your professions, at the end you just end up with hundreds of items that you would never use. So there's a bloated supply of items, and also those items are super cheap on the marketplace. So the solutions. We're going to be reducing the item variety. So there'll be less items in total, like less different items. So everything is used in a bunch of different recipes, and there's always demand for every item. Uh, each profession will also have different methods of leveling and a different amount of levels. So one feels different and it feels like you're mastering every profession in a different way. Um, all the crafting is quick and satisfying. And then the items will be powerful, like extremely powerful. For example, one of the potions I made to... Uh, like for the for the rework has uh sixteen hundred damage about that's the i'll I'll be talking more about potions later, and you understand why it's so powerful um so with all professions, each level will unlock more than one item the item that is that level to level up as fast as possible, and also as you level up, you'll unlock quests which also give you spells. And so the new spells are a combination of the spells that used to be available but aren't available anymore, and also old versions of spells like the old Conflamorous, for example, the one from uh, the original exploration update before we changed it back. Um, so for Herbology, to gain experience in Herbology, you'll go out into the world and harvest resource nodes. And so it's more about harvesting than planting, because you'll be able to plant any seeds that you get. You just can't harvest any nodes, or it's more difficult to harvest high level nodes if you're a lower level. Um, magical plants will be removed, so those are all the plants that cast spells, like uh, Babbling Bulb and Flower of Darkened Dreams, for example. Um, resource nodes will be coupled with mob spawns, so you have to go to a mob spawn and harvest the resource node, and so you can't really ignore the mobs there as well because harvesting will have a cast time of sorts where you have to stand there, it'll, um, if you move or get damaged while you're harvesting the node, it'll cancel, it won't put the node on cooldown, but it'll cancel your harvesting. Um, and also every node will give specific items, so you'll know exactly what you're harvesting. If you want to harvest wheat, you'll you just have to find the cords in the codex and go to that node, harvest the wheat, and you have it. Um also to uh have a counter to the time gate of the node cooldown, you can also craft fertilizer to reduce the node cooldowns. Uh, and so, also with uh, fertilizer, you can, when you use it on a node, it has a chance to spawn an enchanted plant. And when you kill the enchanted plant, it's a mob. Um, when you kill it, it'll drop an enchanted seed, and the enchanted seeds uh, grow into enchanted plants again and create stronger items. I'll go into more later. Um, so, generally, the grow times will be longer than now, like longer than the herbs now, the herbs are two and a half minutes. So it'll be longer than that, uh, but you'll yield more. So if wheat is planted for 15 minutes, you'll get like 10 wheat from it, for example. 
And that's just to give you guys time to actually do something else in between uh, uh, planting and harvesting it from the plant pot. Um, you'll also be able to plant in the slash me menu at the additional cost uh, cost of using fertilizer. So can be uh, portable with whatever you're planting. So then cooking. Progression is done by doing quests that are given to you by the Master Chef. And so progressing isn't just cooking the same thing over and over. It's cooking something different. And it'd also be like a time trial sort of thing where you'll get the quest, uh, you'll have like an hour to do it, and if you don't do it in that time, it just stops the quest. You can't get the XP from it. So yes, you can just buy the ingredients from the marketplace, but if everyone's doing that, the prices of the items go really high, so you'd be spending a lot of gold. Um, so cooking items are about increasing spell stats, that is the damage of certain elements, and also uh, stuff like mobility range and uh, concentration, some of the stuff that the talents do as well. So you could get... 50% power in water spells and also get 30% extra mobility range from a cooking item for like 30 minutes, for example. And so to cook, you just have to get all the items from like required for that cooking item. You go up to a furnace uh, and then you click the item you want in the GUI and then a couple seconds later, it's finished. So that's to make it quick and you don't have to wait around for it and it's just so uh it's more useful to actually make the items and then go out and kill some mobs so you don't have to like make an item one day and then go back to the mob the next day um so there are three types of food which are snacks meals and feasts snacks have the strongest buffs but they last the shortest amount of time feasts have the uh smallest buffs but last like up to hours and meals are somewhere in the middle. And then there's also enchanted food, which is the same as snacks, meals, and feasts, but they're made with enchanted ingredients. So those are enchanted plants and enchanted mob drops. And those are up to double as strong as the normal versions of them. So you can also cook in Slash Me. However, that'll take longer than just going up to a furnace. A furnace is a couple seconds. In Slash Me, it takes probably like up to a half an hour or something um okay then potions potions become what the magical plants are now which are the big effects the a lot of damage uh they cost spells and we're kind of bringing back the old system of brewing however it's not in a gui so you'll have the items in your hand and right click on the cauldron in with the items in the correct order uh within a certain amount of time uh we're also bringing back the rarity system so each potion will have a common rare epic and legendary version and each rarity rule will require different enchanted ingredients with legendary requiring requiring <laughs> requiring everything to be enchanted yeah, and making legendary potions won't necessarily be easy, but it'll be easier than making a legendary Felix Felice back in the day uh, because we have something else planned for uh, unlocking last room in Cesis. And progression in potions is done by brewing every single potion in your current level as a legendary potion. So it actually feels like you master potions when you're leveling up. So moving on to magic, we're planning on removing the player stats, which are health, magic, and power. Uh, this is because it's difficult to balance. Uh, and yeah, just like a level 80 player can just one hit a wiggle worm, for example. And it, if you need ingredients from a wiggle worm, it's way too easy for you. To do that um and also in dueling class and stuff high level is just one shot low level players um but that doesn't mean it gets removed completely 
players will have 100 health instead of 20 and also 300 magic and then power is irrelevant because everyone will deal the same damage excluding talents uh talents will also receive a update this is to make it more simple and every talent is going to be very useful uh, as opposed to right now where there are a bunch of talents that are very situational yeah so that's magic uh and then gear so what does gear to do it gives you defensive stats against elements it doesn't increase your damage at all that's just uh cooking and so you'll need gear to fight higher tier mobs like a tier 7 mob will one shot you you don't have gear um but the gear defensive stats don't affect pvp so won't be reducing damage from players just mobs but we do have another way of uh, incentivizing getting gear for PvP, which is gear sets. So gear sets are a uh, a set of items which share the same theme and protect against the same element. Um, and when you are wearing multiple items of the same gear set, you get a set bonus. And the set bonus comes in the form of an enchantment. And an enchantment is similar to a talent but more protection based so one of them for example is reducing fall damage uh so yeah you could wear a full gear set and not take any fall damage for example so crafting gear once you are level 41 you can do a quest at hogsworth which introduces you to the tailor and the disenchanter and the tailor will craft gear for you so you just have to get mob drops, craft them together, um, and the tailor will craft the gear for you. Uh, you also have to level up the tailor to craft higher tier gear, so uh, you can't just go and get the best loot and then craft the best gear. You have to work your way up there. Uh, the disenchanter is so you can break down your like used gear into uh, crafting pieces again. So if you have a gear, a gear piece that you don't like anymore, you can just disenchant it and get some some of the materials back. Um, and all gear is bound, so you can't sell it, but you can sell the crafting materials. That's just so you can't um, craft gear for a friend and then just give it to them. They also have to work their way to uh, top tier gear. Um, and then there's also durability for gear. So most of that will come from dying like most of the durability loss will come from dying when you're damaged there will be like a very tiny chance that you'll lose any durability but when you die you'll lose for example 50 percent of the current durability so if you're full durability you'll lose half of the durability but if you're at half of the durability you'll only lose 25 percent so it's exponential and it'll it'll take a while for gear to break as long as you don't keep dying. Uh, we will also be looking into uh, not having durability lost, lost while in like dueling halls and similar places because we want you guys to duel as much as possible. So yeah, that's game design. So there were some questions submitted uh, to game design and to you specifically uh, during all the talks. Uh, uh, plans for future things to spend gold on that'll well that'll be the new professions and gear as well. A lot of it will be uh, spent on the marketplace for sure because. Otherwise, you have to you have to farm all the materials yourself. That's going to take a while. Making the stuff is actually quick. Um, it's just farming it that takes a while. Why did I feel it was necessary to decrease the amount of gold given by chests? So a lot of people were just getting gold from chests. That's just running or running around. Um, it's not difficult. It just takes time. And there are also going to be a lot more chests on the new map. So you'll be able to get tons of gold from that. It'll just take longer as well. Any plans with the Asmia? Um, yes. Yeah, so the the uh, Dark Prison Dungeon and the Revenant Dungeon will receive a rework with this update, with the Revelius update. 
and they will reward very strong crafting materials or similar. Uh, changes to fire dust and other transportation. Yes, there will be a change to getting around the map. This is just so like um, having a broom will be useful and it'll probably cost a little bit to get around the map instantly, but you can still fly there. It doesn't take that long. It's just much more convenient to spend some gold and travel. Will the profession revamp be here in the next six months? Uh, we don't want to put a time on it, but we definitely want to have this stuff out this year. Um, I feel like that's enough time. Us. Uh, if you have le already leveled up a certain profession, will you get spells? Even if we have, even if you've passed that level, all professions will be completely reset with this update um, because the whole leveling system is completely different. All the items are different. Uh, yeah, all items will be removed or compensated as well. We're still discussing whether we should compensate items or just straight up remove them because compensating them may skew the economy a little bit. Will professions be aligned with class design with things like potions and herbology? Uh, we have not fully talked about that yet, but in my opinion, it would be good to do that. Yeah, we've kind of had a slight conversation, uh, but we're still exploring like ideas. That, that's not really something we're working too hard on right now. Yeah, it's still the professions update is still a little bit away, so it's not something we've fully discussed yet. Um, any more updates on the creature profession? We're only starting to work on that after the Revelius update. Uh, will side along apparition be a thing for the new world map? Also, will apparition with several people be a thing? So that's not not exactly side along apparition, but we do have the ability to do port keys in a way. So you'd place a port key on the ground, and then everyone who right clicks it within the next few seconds gets teleported to the location. Um, but no ETA on when that's going to come out because that we haven't that at all. Will gear appear gear appearances not in store thing but in game be a thing because some people will want the highest level gear but might hate the appearance of it. So gear is just in a GUI. It's not visual at all. Maybe a gear set will give you like a particle effect on yourself, but you won't be able to see it on someone. Uh, we do want to have. The ability to see someone's like gear GUI in game, so you could like interact with a player and then click on a gear tab and see their gear. And also, we would like to have that available on the new website as well, as well as like talents and professions levels. Uh, is there a possibility of there being cursed items, items that give you negative status effect for as long as it's inside your inventory? Uh, no plans for that. I don't think it's necessary because people would just throw it away. So yeah, like all the all the new items will be droppable as well. Like the current professions items you can't drop. All the new items will be droppable. What about grads before the gear levels professions updates? Will they just miss out on the lower level stuff or be able to complete it but extremely easily? So the the mob fights will be easier because you have more spells. But since we're removing all those stats, it's still a little, not like super easy. Um, all the spells and stuff that come from professions, that's just leveling up professions. So that's everyone is a lower level in professions with this update. Um, and with gear, you can, you'd be able to buy gear. Like before level 41, you can buy gear from robe shops and similar places. I think one we had planned was the laundry room. That's next to the greenhouses. Um, but then from level 41 onwards, you can just craft much stronger gear so that you also have to level up your tailor there as well. I can answer a little bit of the 41. So the 41 is um, getting, we, we, we've we sussed out the, the amount of time it takes to get to level 41. And we're kind of treating that time to get up to around uh, that year four. Uh, range to be like the tutorial section where we kind of help 
um, players kind of learn about the game and kind of teach them the basics. And that part of it is easier for everything to come by. Once around 41, you um, are expected to kind of understand how the, the game and the whole system works. Then we start kind of opening the doors and kind of introducing more elements to the game so it doesn't overwhelm a new player. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so the the lower level quests we have like up to level thirty planned for Hogsworth and Hog's End. Uh, those will be kind of like tutorials in a sense where they teach you gameplay mechanics. Uh, they'll still be like entertaining for experienced players. Um, but yeah, they will introduce you to professions as well at level 21 and then in london at level 31 you can do the professions tutorials um cool beats. um okay so um someone asked a question whether there's going to be any new roles like more non-staff or staff ranks um this question is a little bit hard to answer because a lot of the time, it's it's not for certain that something's going to happen. Um, it would depend on how our teams function, and if we see a different sort of like structure fitting for the team more, um, then changes would be made to within that team. Um, therefore, it's not really an answer we can say yes or no or give anything specifics about. But of course, if there's like any positions that players will be able to uh, apply for, um, it will be uh, announced on the website and so on, um, with all the uh, requirements listed. Um, then there is a question for Kate. Um, are we able to suggest things for class design? If not, can it please be possible? Uh, so for this one, uh, the best answer is just user voice. Um, I know Terry checks it um, almost daily. So if you have an, a suggestion for class design, just make it pretty um, obvious that it's for class design. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, another question was, are guilt families still going to be a thing? Uh, that's one for me. So yes, we're still working on guilds. Um, it's coming later this year. Another one for Kate and class design is how do I apply for class design? It seems uh, super interesting to me and I want to apply. Um, so class design is a staff only team, unfortunately. And also it's a, an academics only team. So that's kind of why we're a smaller team. and You might not hear much about us. It's because you have to be both on the staff team and on the academic team. Um, then we also have a question, why is the Lappy mod allowed, uh, and is it going to be changed in the future? So, Lappy mod isn't allowed because it has features that provide advantages over other people who don't have it. So that's the basis around why we don't want to modify clients whatsoever. Um, there is tech that is being worked on to allow this, so we don't have the features that allow this. Um, but there's no ETA on that, so for now it's staying Band. Uh, for Flipendo, will there be world bosses, and will it be for higher level players only? So there will be a stronger variants of a lot of the mobs. Uh, they won't be. I, I saw a user voice suggestion that said add world bosses that are like stronger than Yasmir and Xerxes and stuff. They won't be that strong. They won't be as strong as Yasmir or Xerxes either. Um, but. They'll be kind of like mini bosses and they'll give you better loot than the normal variants of those mobs. Um, and to add on a little bit, we if we ever do decide to do world bosses, they have to be in their own little warped area because it would be kind of sucky to be like, oh, a giant has spawned in the middle of, you know, Forbidden Forest or something like that. And then any rando player that's walking by just gets swept up in that damage and instantly dies. Um, I feel like world bosses should be something you opt into doing. And so instead, it might be like, oh, you go to the Forbidden Forest, there's a boot there, then the, you know, raid or whatever that wants to fight the world boss wants to fight them, they activate the boot, they all teleport in, and then they start the fight. Uh, one, that'll be better for performance, 
on the entire world, considering we're all on one world now, opposed to separate uh, worlds. And two, it won't like punish, uh, you know, bypassers and not bypassers, but like uh, passerbys that are just walking by. Then we have: Is there going to be more development around your blood type and such? Uh, so there was uh, a user voice suggestion for that a while ago. I think it's one of the top voted ones, actually. Um, we are planning to do something with blood types in the future in terms of like quest storylines and stuff. But it's not a priority because we want to get quests out for everyone rather than like a third of the player base, for example. Okay, that's a question for you there. Yeah. Uh, will the castle ever be revamped again like uh, it was in 2017? Ha! That's a great question. The, the castle that is currently on the world map is completely revamped. It is a new version of the castle that is unlike the one on life. It's also much better, more accurate, and has also way more secrets that we are building into it. So, um, yeah. It will be familiar. However, all the hallways have been redone. We've actually resized parts of the castle. We've added some new areas. And, like I said, a ton of secret secrets. Cool beans. Um, if anyone has any last minute questions, uh, now is the time to submit them all. Yeah, many secret secrets. Um, I was asked if I could teach people Dutch. I can't. I don't speak Dutch. Uh, cobble ball teams. What are yeah, the plans I already, for this? I already uh, talked about that a little bit. I'll yep. go a bit more into it. So. Um, it would just be like queuing up for a, a game in Slash Games. Um, it would be like Slash Games tournaments, for example, like Slash Games space tournaments. Uh, and you would have to be uh, added to that queue. So not everyone can queue up and it's you basically just ask the teams who are um, about to have a match to queue up. And then... It's uh, it would be longer games because it would be a tournament, and also structured like a tournament as well. Uh, why have we not seen as many role play events as before? I can speak to that. So, the role play events are something that was a little bit hard to control, considering all of it was made up by a few people, and then everyone just kind of like followed along what their story was. However, what it turned out to be is that it required a lot of support from external teams uh that being if there was a role play team it would also need build team and also quest builder team and also magic and also all these things for it to work um it was something that we did a long time ago when we didn't actually have the different realms so realms being like we have world one world two world three or whatever um back when the server was just one world uh role play could be done because everyone would funnel to that one world to see what was happening now uh, for that to happen, you know, only 80 people would be able to experience that event at a time. So the technical limitations of allowing everyone to do it would require, you know, those said people to do the show or whatever, if you want to call it that way, um, 10 or 12 or however many times. And it just wasn't practical. So until we can find a way for it to be um, done in a more automated way where the roleplay can happen no matter what server you're on, um, it's something that we have to figure out first before we can reintroduce roleplay events. Then we also have, in regards to that, uh, will there ever be a Dark Lord figure again? I think that would be involved in the, the whole roleplay thing. Yeah, when so that comes the, earliest out. We'd, yeah. the earliest we'd look at that kind of stuff is next year. We have mm. other priorities at the moment. Yeah, then we also have who specifically looks over user voice suggestions. Essentially, uh, the entire staff team. Uh, mostly, like, if there's like uh, built-related suggestions, obviously the built team would be more the ones who go over those. Um, the dev team go goes over the dev-related ones. Um, basically, everyone is able to review it. Uh, but the dev team is uh, reviewing on a regular basis now. Uh, for the new map, will I be able to just uh, walk, let's say, from Hawksworth to Diagon Lane, or would there be teleports like the link between the dwelling and Luna Hovel? Okay, I can answer this. So, uh, 
the world that you see on the screenshot that we sent, um, that's an open world. You can walk anywhere you want on there. There are a couple limitations that we have, such as um, we wanted to make it so that the interior build of London, which is like uh, the parts where you can actually see like the buildings up close and all that stuff, uh, to be infinitely kind of expandable. Uh, that being said, there's a couple of worlds, such as the Ministry and stuff like that, that have to also be on their own warp, quote-unquote, because um, those are technically underground, and like I said, the map is already using the entire 256 block scale. So those have to be on a separate world. Um, the build that you're going to see on the world is actually a facade London, which is it looks like the city of London, and, and then when you when you get close to it, it will warp you to the interior build, and that being like the build that you guys currently see. Uh, things like Dagon, uh, Privet, and all that stuff will all be on there. Um, and then, or Mundane Lane, but yeah. Um, and then you can kind of uh, go wherever you want once you're actually in there. So this also allows us to uh, infinitely expand the city in case we need to and not have to worry about, oh no, now we have to build out into the middle of the ocean because there's just not enough space on the world map. Um, but everything else, yes, you should be able to fly from one point or walk from one point all the way down to the other point. Um, will there be more practical activities in classes in the future? Or does that depend on the professors teaching the classes? So that's kind of yes and no. It does depend on the professors teaching the classes. However, it's also something that we're trying to encourage in professors and uh, class designer always working on like new ways of people being able to teach practical activities in classes. So uh, yes, there will be more, but yes, it also depends on the professor teaching the class. Someone asked what's the requirements for staff and the acceptance rate. That depends on the application uh, on which position it is for. Um, all the applications do state uh, the specific requirements. I recommend going directly to the head of that department. Um, it also depends on like the position in terms of like how many people are we accepting versus how many are actually applying. So that's uh, not a straightforward answer. <laughs> Sorry. Let's see. Uh, so what happened to the Phoenix update and what's after the Rebellious update? So the Phoenix update was originally our um, first design plan of what we wanted to do with the world. Um, as with everything, um, I think it's important for us to be ambitious because without shooting for the uh, moon, you'll never kind of like land in the stars even if you miss. So um, the Phoenix update was that first uh, alpha design. And then the Revelius update is the incremental, uh, I guess, output of this design. So our first release would be like, you know, like according to that map, everything left of the dotted line and that's still part of the Phoenix update, technically speaking, but we've broken it down into more doable amounts of work for us because, I mean, we all have our own lives and stuff like that. Potter World isn't our job, technically speaking. It's a hobby that we all kind of do for fun. And because of that, it's like, uh, if we had like a full-on development, developmental team, then yeah, I think the Phoenix update would have just remained the way it was. However, since, you know, we do this for a hobby, um, everyone has, you know, real lives to get back to, uh, we've broken it down to just smaller increments. So, Revelis update is the first part, and then um, after that, to answer that question, it'll be the next update to release the, uh, I guess, the France country, and then after that, the uh, Norwegian country. So, um, the the TLDR is that the Phoenix update has been broken up into pieces to be released. Someone asked, what's the point of the moderation department if all staff are moderating? For example, I see game design moderating just as much as trainees. So there's a lot more that goes into moderating than just helping out. Um, the moderation department is a lot more specific in terms of what we do. Game design is primarily focused on the game design aspect of the server, whereas moderation is focused on helping out, making sure people, people are following the rules. It's it's hard to put into words, but there is a lot more that goes on behind the scenes that moderation does. So it's a lot more complex than what you might think it is, if that makes sense. Um, will there ever be a year without uh, a big update that focuses, focuses just on little improvements? Yes. So 
thinning my plan is to get everything to a comfortable amount of um, progress that we can start just focusing on the small little things. Um, I feel like the reason why we've been talking so much about having these bigger and bigger updates is because like there is a vision that I have for Potter World, which is like pushing it more towards a little bit away from just pure RP, which is like the first iteration of Potter World was like no plugins, no nothing. It was literally just we were just there RPing and just having, you know, it's just more of a social experience into an actual game. We want to get that game part working first. Um, this means all the core systems like gear and leveling and quests and all that stuff into the world. Once all that is in there and in a comfortable state where I feel like it's working, where new players can come on and not feel like I I need like a tour guide, I don't know exactly what to do or how to do anything, um, then we can go back to focusing on um, smaller things. Um, any plans on the whole storyline aspect? So all the quests that are being made, uh, like little storylines, there's n probably not going to be a whole overarching storyline because that establishes characters and uh, lore for locations and stuff, and then we have to stick to that, and it causes problems in the future where we'd rather have the freedom to do more different things. I can explain a little bit about this as well. So, I mean, we bounce back and forth of a main storyline versus just kind of world quests. The reason why we're going with this way is because a lot of the feedback that we got from you guys was that um, you guys liked that you could come onto Potter World and make your own story. I feel like if we literally designed a main storyline where everyone experienced it in the same exact way, because that's how main storylines work, everyone is then homogenized into one type of hero, one type of character. Whereas I feel like if we had a world quest system where it's more just like each individual zone has their own little story going on and you can experience it in the way that you want, in the order that you want, you can become that hero or villain or whatever the way you want to do it, opposed to forcing you to be like, oh, you're the chosen one. Come and get this same one that everyone else is going to get and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then there's a question. How often do you expect to be hosting Q&A sessions like this in the future? Um, this is not a question that we really have an answer to. We don't want to be like, oh yeah, in X amount of time we'll have another Q&A in case there's like um, not a, what do you call it, not a use for it as to not to commit to something that'll then not end up happening. Um, however, any future Q&As will be um, announced in due time. I believe this was it of all the questions and what everyone had to bring forward. We wanted to thank you all for joining us today um, and for all your questions. Um, if there is anything specific you want to know, again, in relating to something that a head of department um, can answer, feel free to uh, um, submit that to them in a private message. Um, and of course, this Q&A will be uploaded onto the YouTube uh, page once uh, fully done and edited. But yeah, thank you guys for, for coming. Yeah, thanks everyone. We appreciate your questions. Please keep sending them in. Um, we'll try to get to them as much as possible and keep using the user voice because that's really, really helpful for us because we get a lot of our ideas and stuff based on the stuff that you guys submit. So thank you.